let's all slow down and enjoy the ride while we are manifesting our dream life. And literally, I mean, slow down. So you are manifesting your relationship with your specific person. And everybody wants it to be instant right now, just like that. And that is absolutely wonderful. You want to wake up tomorrow morning and you want to be opening the door and they're bringing all of their stuff in. But are you truly prepared for what that fully entitles? Or would you prefer to slow down and let it take 30, 60, 90 days, six months for this to all come about? There's pros and cons to both, but we're going to talk about why I think you should slow down on what you're manifesting so that you can enjoy your life. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful duckling. Subscribe, smash the like button, share my video. I will love you forever. I am the best life coach with a 99.6% success rate in getting people back together with the love of their life. If you'd be interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one or joining my paid Facebook group where it is the only place I go live, please check out the links in the description below. So why do I say we need to slow down? Well, let's do a dinner party. You are manifesting your specific person. They moved in today, right now today, and you're having a dinner party with, oh, uh, say four people, you, your specific person and two other people. And because your specific person is moving in today and you're having this dinner party tonight, you're going to be in chaos. You're not going to be enjoying the fact that your specific person moved in. You're going to be in total chaos. And you are going to be rushing around trying to put all of this stuff away. So you're going to be slamming it in closets and drawers and trying to bring in the furniture that he brought and the bed that he bought. And now there's two sets of pots and pans and two sets of dishes and two sets of forks and knives and spoons for you to be eating with. And you're expecting company because you've manifested this. This is your dream and you just got it. Okay, so you're making dinner, running around the house, trying to set up his furniture with your furniture to make it look aesthetically pleasing when your guests come over. Now, your guests, we're going to up this, is the boss that is handing the keys to your, holds the keys to your promotion, which brings you the money that you want so that you can then afford to move into your dream house. So we're gonna up this ante because we're not all just manifesting one thing. So you're manifesting the promotion at work, your specific person moving in with you right now today, and you're having that dinner party with your boss and his wife. So your specific person sets the table and he gets some of the dishes, there's only a couple plates in your cabinet, so he grabs the plates, doesn't know the dishwasher is clean. He takes two plates out of the cabinet and he puts two plates down on the table. And then he goes and gets his box and he gets two plates out of his box and he sets those on the table. And then he does the little uh, salad plate and a little soup bowl. So we're gonna do a full three thing. So you have the big plate, the little plate, and the bowl. They don't match. There's two of each. Literally, there's two of your sets, two of his sets. And then he gets to the silverware. Again, he goes to the drawer. There's only a couple pieces of silverware. So he grabs the knives because that's what's in the drawer because the spoons and the forks are in your dishwasher because you used them and ran your dishwasher, but you didn't put it away yet. So he goes to his stuff. So now he has your knives and he gets his spoons and forks and he sets them up on the table. So now you have two separate plate sets. So there's two plate sets that match and, and another two plate sets that match. So, and now your knives don't match your spoons and your forks, but you want to impress your boss for this promotion. And your boss shows up an hour early because there's a snowstorm that we all just went through. 
So your boss shows up an hour early. And there are boxes all over the living room. There's bags, there's suitcases. And you open up the door and you're shocked. You were not prepared to entertain your boss that night because you were in chaos with your specific person moving in with all of their stuff. So on the way to the bathroom is their bed. In your living room is now two couches and two chairs, but it's not big enough for two couches and two chairs. You wanted that instant manifestation. But let's create a different story. You and your specific person have gotten back together. You are going to be moving in together. His apartment is smaller than yours, so we're going to move into your apartment better start to our story so now he has to finish out two months on his lease if he breaks his lease he has to pay the two months rent plus a thousand dollar fine so we're just gonna say he's got to pay three thousand dollars to get out of his lease so we decide we're gonna take 60 days and slowly move in together so he starts bringing over some of his clothes so you clean out the dresser drawers so he's got room for socks and underwear. You clean out a nightstand so he has a full nightstand that he could put his wallet, his keys, his phone on to charge at night when you're sleeping. Then you start cleaning out your closet because he starts bringing in clothes. And then you're at his house helping him pack on the weekend and you're debating whose couch do you keep, whose chair do you keep. Which bed set do you keep? Whose dining room table do you keep? What plate sets, silverware set, pots and pans? What can we sell? What can we give away? What can somebody else that we know that might need a couch do? We have 60 days to go through both places and decide what to keep. So we're not making a rash decision. We're not gonna say, well, we're gonna keep your couch and chair and just fling mine to the curb with my boss coming up for my big promotion. So now my boss comes for that dinner party and he shows up early. And my specific person is there because my boss wants to meet them. So my specific person sets the table. Well, there's only two plates in the cabinet. Babe, where's the rest of the plates? Oh, they're in the dishwasher. I, I ran them last night, but I haven't had a chance to empty it today. So he's now going to go into the dishwasher and the table is going to match. You're going to have four big plates, four little plates, four bowls. Your knives, forks, and spoons are all going to match. You're going to have four glasses that match. So when your boss walks in and sits down at their table, it looks beautifully decorated. Your house is nice. There might be a few boxes because you brought in some stuff that day with your specific person, but it's not chaos. You slowed down and you took 60 days to move that person in. 60 days isn't a lot over 50 years. You still have 18,202 days that you're going to be fully living with this person. But you took those 60 days and you enjoyed going through. Because let me tell you, if somebody moved into my house right now tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and I opened up the door, there's two bed sets, two couches, two chairs, two dining room tables, two sets of dishes, two sets of pots and pans. I can handle the kitchen stuff but I can't handle two bed sets. I can't handle two couches and two chairs in my living room. It's not gonna be big enough. If they were moving into my daughter's, they couldn't handle that because her kitchen is actually a little smaller than mine. So she wouldn't be able to handle two sets of plates and dishes, uh, bowls and spoons, knives, forks, all of that. She doesn't have the extra cabinets that I have. So these are things that you need to look at. And that is why everything has its birthing process. A kitten takes six weeks. A baby is 40 weeks. An elephant is almost two years. But what do you do 
during those six weeks, those 40 weeks, or those two years that it takes to birth this process. You get to enjoy your life. And that's what we're not doing because we're so set on, we have to have that manifestation right now, this very moment. But what if we let it slowly happen over a 60 day time period? A three month, which is 90 days, six months, which is 180 days. Would that be such a bad thing then? Absolutely, positively not. It wouldn't be a bad thing at all. When we are consciously creating our life, we are affirming to change it for the better and we need to affirm and we have to persist in our assumptions and we have to talk about how wonderful this, this is. But here's where I teach you differently. I'm happily married to Jared. I have a happy marriage to Jared. Why am I happily married to Jared? Why do I have a happy marriage to Jared? You want to do the I am statements or the I have statements. It doesn't matter. We're just going to pick one and we're going to go with the I have. I have a happy marriage to Jared. That means these 60 days that things were shifting for him to move in were fun. They were easy. They were enjoyable. I'm not at his throat because my boss is coming over about a promotion that I'm going to get for work and the house is in chaos. Because let's face it, if that happened and your boss showed up an hour early because of a snowstorm coming, at the end of that meal, you are going to be so embarrassed about the way your house is and the move in. And you are going to be apologizing to your boss. I'm so sorry. We were trying to get everything moved in before the snowstorm and it just didn't happen. And I understand that things are in chaos. And I'm sorry you got to walk by the bedroom mattress in the hallway to the bathroom. And there's only this much room to go to the bathroom. Your boss is going to look at your house and the relationship and see that you're in chaos. And they're going to postpone your promotion. And then you're going to be even angrier. And because you're even angrier, you're going to fight with your specific person. And then your specific person's going to say, well, screw this. I'm not moving in with you. So we need to slow down. We need to start enjoying life. Because all I could think about being stuck home with the snowstorm was a cupcake. And this is Ophelia's fault, but it's not her fault. Ophelia's birthday was Friday and school has been out because they called school on Tuesday because we had an impending winter storm for Wednesday and then Wednesday they called Thursday and then Thursday they called Friday and now the kids may go back to school on Monday depending upon whether or not the roads are icy and the bus can get through. The snow was melting but overnight the temperatures are below freezing so we have ice and all I wanted was a cupcake and a Diet Dr. Pepper. But I couldn't get out because I'm not taking my sports car out in eight inches of snow. My son was snow plowing, so he couldn't do it. My daughter was at work, who and my son came and picked up and took to work. And then she helped him snow plow on Thursday. And then Friday, she was able to go to work. But the cupcake order got canceled because nobody showed up to decorate the cupcakes. We still had our party Friday night. And not a lot of people showed up because of the weather. Think about this. We had fun at the birthday party, but I'm all depressed and upset because I didn't get a cupcake. Now for her party, we had a cake. And I am sorry, but there is a huge difference between a cupcake and a cake. There is. We all know it. We're just not going to be petty about it and fight over it. There is a difference. It doesn't matter if you have a billion dollars in your bank account. It doesn't matter if you're married to your specific person. It doesn't matter if you get your promotion. If you are so mortified that your boss showed up and your house was in disarray. When you go to bed that night with your specific person, you're not going to be having adult extracurricular activity. You're going to be arguing. And you're going to start the first night of living together on the wrong foot. So slow down. Just slow down. 
your manifestation is going to show up. It has no choice. No matter what, it's going to show up. Because I can tell you, somebody who got married in 60 days was not prepared for living with this person. Wasn't prepared for actually physically being married. All they wanted was marriage, 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 marriage. And they got it. Then we had to find the happy part of the marriage. Then we had to get living together, working out. But when you slow down and you enjoy your life and you are seeing your end, happily married to Jared, that's when you stop micromanaging what's happening in the outside world and you start managing yourself and you're micromanaging your thoughts because you're having that dinner party and he's coming in with another trailer load of stuff and you're flipping out. My boss is coming. Where are we going to put all this stuff? You don't want to start off living together in chaos. So when we slow down, we can pick and choose what we're keeping, what we're getting rid of. And we're not making a rash decision. We're making a decision based on what adds value to your life. Is his couch more comfortable than yours? Is yours more comfortable than his? Which mattress are you going to keep? I have a soft mattress. What if he has a firm mattress? Do we have to get a medium mattress? Think about these little details that you're not even thinking about that need to be worked out in order to start this wonderful marriage on an amazing footing. We don't think about that. We just think that we have to have it right now, this very moment. And if we don't get it right now, this second, we're going to be upset. To speed it up, we say, right now, right now, today, today. But we're not micromanaging every little thing that's out there. Because if we were, we'd be going crazy. You are literally packing up his apartment and you're going, not keeping, not keeping, not keeping, not keeping. And you accidentally threw out the silverware set that was five generations in the family. You're going to hear about that from his family for the rest of your relationship. But when you slow down, you get to pick and choose. You get to see what adds value, what fits. And you may decide that because you have to fulfill the contracts with your lease and his lease, well, we're just going to go buy a house. So you buy a house. And now you have more room to keep more furniture. You can use one of the bed sets as a guest room. Hmm. So you start out with the one bedroom set in there and find out you don't like the mattress. Now you can take the mattresses out of the guest room and switch them with the mattresses in the master bedroom. Because you slowed down, you enjoyed life, and you allowed the universe, God, or whatever you want to call it, figure out the details of this move-in. You allowed the birthing process to completely go full term. You don't want to have a baby six months early because that baby is going to be in the hospital for a long period of time. There may be complications, learning disabilities. You wouldn't rush that pregnancy of 40 weeks. My first son was a child, was a boy, and Hank was six weeks early. My mother-in-law passed away during my pregnancy. Six weeks later, my son was born six weeks early. He spent a week in the hospital. We weren't prepared for that. And that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You guys want to enjoy your life. You still have to live in this present moment because we only live in the now. So do you 
have a list of exactly what furniture you're keeping and what furniture you're getting rid of, what silverware you're keeping, what shampoos are you keeping, what conditioners are you keeping. Are you giving up the closet in the master and taking the closet in the uh, bathroom? Because in my bathroom, my master bedroom, there is a closet in the master bedroom and there's a closet in the master bathroom. Which one do I get? Which one does he get? So preparing becomes more important than the actual manifestation. You're in such a hurry to live with this person that you're missing the joy of actually dating them, actually getting to spend the night with them, actually finding out which mattress the two of you like better, which is an important thing because some nights he sleeps at your house, some nights you sleep at his house and you find out that his mattress is actually better even though you wanted the soft one. The universe took care of all those details for you simply because you took your time and enjoyed dating this person, getting to know this person again, finding out what it's like to live with them, even though you're going back and forth between two different places. Because when you move in together, there's a lot that needs to be done especially if you're trying to combine two houses into one. What are you doing? And most people will answer the question of where are you moving while well, we're getting a bigger place. Well, that's now three. You're getting a bigger place, you're getting a promotion, and you're moving in with your specific person all in one day. And your boss is coming to dinner. If you slowed down and enjoyed the roller coaster ride, you would have noticed that there would have been a little bit of oh, up and down, you know, that little spinny thing, but then it smooths out and everything at the end of the ride is a bed of roses. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. It's incredible, but you didn't micromanage your reactions to your specific person not reacting to you in the way that you wanted. You enjoyed dating. You enjoyed finding out which bedroom set to keep. You enjoyed deciding which couch to keep, which TV to keep. If my specific person has a TV, if it's bigger than a 55, we're going to keep his TV and get rid of mine. Because I only want one TV in the house. And I don't want a TV in the master bedroom because I don't want my specific person coming to bed and watching TV. I want my specific person coming to bed and talking to me. I want to be able to go to bed without having the TV on. I've already been there, done that. It's not something I'm willing to negotiate on. But if he's got a 75 inch TV and I have a 50 inch TV and I say, oh, well, we could keep your TV and your TV stand, but my couch and chair is more comfortable He's going to be more apt to want to move in with me because I looked at what adds value to our home. I didn't just say, well, we're going to get rid of all your shit and keep mine. Because I actually had a guy who did that. I, he literally was going to move in with me and I had to get rid of all of my stuff. And we had to keep his stuff because if we broke up and this relationship didn't work, he didn't want to start all over again and have to go buy new furniture. You know, the funny thing is that guy doesn't have any of that furniture that he originally had when I turned down his offer. Think about what you're creating. Take your time and enjoy it because when you slow down, that's when those little things that you never even thought about become memories that you tell your great grandkids when you're sitting on the porch rocking and they're playing in the yard and they're like, grandma, can you tell great grandma, can you tell me about how you and grandpa moved in together? What was that like? And you have a beautiful story instead of one of chaos. I love you guys.
Have an absolutely positively amazing day. And as always, leave me a comment and let me know how and drastically changing your life for the better.